You've hit play on the Screen Companion, a show about making your viewing time count. This time, my very special guest is Laura. Hi. Looking at the first two episodes of Veronica Mars. It started back in 2004, and of course, you and I are old enough to have been in high school in 2004, just like the titular character. <laughs> mm hmm. Think back almost 20 years now. What was high school like in 2004? Awkward. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> and back then, do you remember any of the shows you were watching? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Loss was a big one at the time. For me, it was America's Next Top Model. Oh, yeah. That was starting to get big around that time. That was UPN as well, wasn't it? Yeah, and so that's why I wanted to do Veronica Mars, because the only thing I watched from UPN at that time was America's Next Top Model and not Veronica Mars, surprisingly. Were you aware of the show at all? Had the marketing found its way to you? No. I heard about it years later as something I should have watched but then just never made the time for it. UPN, as far as I know, was always something of a struggling network. I don't even think they were in every market in the United States. I was aware of Veronica Mars, but I wasn't tuning in every week. Could you give us just a basic idea of what the premise is for the show? Basically, starting off with introducing us to Veronica Mars as she has fallen from grace from the Niners Club, what the popular crew was called, because her father had been investigating the murder of her best friend. Things took a dive, and she sided with her dad to by him, so people turned on her. In the first episode, with finding out she's working for her father as a junior PI, as he's the head PI, and so she solves cases at high school and also helps her father out. I couldn't quite put my finger on how Veronica ended up as the junior PI. Do you think it was because of her interest in it, maybe in a way getting back at the town, or just because there was such a small operation he needed her help? I think it was just her way of standing by him. It's an interesting thing to do. But it was just her way of not being so alone because everyone was against her. I remember in that first episode. And then later on, we find out that something happened to her at a party and that further made her an outcast. But it was just, I think, her way of bonding with her dad. The father-daughter aspect of the show, thankfully, is a big through line throughout the whole series. And certainly something I like to watch having come from a single-parent household. So, right after you watched the first two episodes, what were your initial thoughts about it? Did it make you a little sad you didn't check it out at the time? Yes! <laughs> there were so many people in this series that I'm like, oh, I've seen your face in this other show. Or, wait, you were on that show? Like, Paris Hilton was in episode two? Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> she was showing up in everything. Knowing... What I know now by high school, it was very much 90s, and compared to other high school shows that were featured later on, this one seemed a lot more believable. Yeah, and as far as the authenticity goes, believe it or not, I struggle to figure out how accurately it portrays teen females' journey through high school. What rang out in particular to you about a girl's high school experience? The fashion. Because I clearly remember there was a time around middle school and high school where those clothes were really popular. And other shows I've watched, it seemed like they're showing a 20-something-year-old in high school. But this one, the clothes were very much something that I remember people my age were wearing at the time. Were you wearing any of the things in this? Yeah, like the polo shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and the little puka shell necklaces or whatever was going on with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Veronica, in the first few episodes, she's wearing a jean jacket. Mm hmm. And I feel like that was pretty prevalent during the time. Did you ever uh, frost your hair? No. 
I did um, highlights with those thick ones, those ones that were from like Kelly Clarkson era, where they were just really, really thick. That's what I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think something that helps the authenticity, like we were saying before, she is helping her dad investigate people, but we never see her really getting into the thick of it. She's just taking pictures. She's doing surveillance. And I think that helps with the credibility because if she was going in there like it was alias and beating up people, that would really hurt the reality. Mm -hmm. And what do you think didn't quite hit the mark as far as 2004 high school was being portrayed? I couldn't really pinpoint it, but I think for me it had to do more with how they set up her high school to be the neptune high or the town that was just really really rich and then there, there was just this class that was just slightly below that i didn't fully understand and from the get-go i thought okay so this is the most unbelievable part of the show but i can tell it's ridiculous so as long as it's consistent i'm okay with it did you feel by the end of the second episode it was holding on to that consistency not so much with the gangster motorcycle guy, Weeble. Like, he definitely comes off as being a lot on the working class end of things. Not the way that she set it up in the first episode where you have these ultra-rich people, unbelievably rich, like millionaires, billionaires, and then these other people who work for them. I saw that more as her talking about, like, secretaries or people in the companies, not necessarily, like, Weeble or his grandma. And I didn't really see how those two worlds mesh together. In a way, it feels like it all culminates, unfortunately for Veronica, at high school, because that's the place where the different classes, no pun intended, have to mix and try to get along. Some of the dialogue, some of the references and word choices. In the second episode, one of the characters says, persnickety. <laughs> That felt like just some clever insert from the writer. Teens weren't saying persnickety. No. <laughs> and then somebody makes a Beach Boys reference, and then somebody else talks about the Outsiders. I know I had to read the Outsiders in school. Did you also? Yeah, we did. I think 10th grade. As far as the Gen Y 2004 trappings in this show, is there anything that really stands out to you the technology or anything else that you think might date it? You mentioned Paris Hilton. Yes. I think the only thing besides that was maybe stuff in the second episode. I think that's where I saw more tech stuff when she was in the newspaper room and showing the technology. And I think the teacher pulled out the camera that she was offering for her to use and describing it. And then she pulls out her camera and that camera talk dated it a little bit the computers that they were on especially how she found his internet history the annoying guy logan and the laptops and things that they were using at the time back then it was so new i remember not even really understanding what internet history was mm -hmm. for the first few years that america online was out oh and the phones the flip phones <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was a simpler time back then. I love those flip phones. Some of the characters are talking about renting videos. Very dated. I think in the show it's called Movie Line. Mm -hmm. But I think they're talking about the real world equivalent at the time, which was Movie Phone and Fandango, where you could call in and find out the movie schedule. Yes. <laughs> did you ever do that? I did. We did with Fandango all the time, because that's how you found out stuff. <laughs> What were some of your favorite scenes or performances in this? Things that didn't make sense at the time, but then I saw it all come together. Like when she was planting evidence on Logan for a bong, and I'm like, why are you doing that? And then it went over to how she had help from Wallace set off the bong so they could gather that evidence and then use it to get the biker gang off his back. So those kind of scenes I liked the best. And then also the one where the dog attacked members of the biker gang. <laughs> I should have realized you would have enjoyed that. <laughs> and back then, it was so 
tech focused and her finding ways to find these solutions to her problems. But now when we look back on it, it looks so lo-fi. When Wallace is using that giant controller to set off the bong from outside the building, Mm -hmm. that could be like a simple smartphone app now. It could, but I like that it was that. I don't know if I would have appreciated this much if this show would have been on now. Ooh. So in its original run, it was three seasons, and then they did a movie, and then they came back in the last couple years, they did a fourth season. Thinking about it now, some of the charm was lost because they had to catch up with newfangled devices and gadgets, and it just wasn't as smart with the way she was figuring things out because now everything's so much more available. Mm -hmm. With this show taking place in Orange County and a lot of Hollywood stuff taking place on the West Coast and in the L.A. area, you, having grown up and lived in the L.A. area, what did you think of the way it was being portrayed in this show? To think about what my high school self knew about Orange County and those rich areas at the time, I thought in that sense it was pretty accurate to what I thought the rich people of Orange County acted like and those areas seemed to be like. From what I know now just from visiting those areas in actuality, I still think a lot of it holds true. What I don't think holds true, that people would just walk by motorcycle gangs beating up on someone and just not do anything. Stuff like that, I feel like, would immediately incite someone to call the cops right away. Yeah, especially now with how basically everybody has a smartphone. Mm Mm-hmm. It would be easy for somebody to just call it in, but you're right. It does happen a few times in the first couple shows where people are getting accosted out on the street, at the beach, in a neighborhood, and it doesn't seem like anybody's doing anything about it. I took away from it this view how it's like half the show takes place at the beach. They have night stuff at the beach, day stuff at the beach, fights at the beach, people hanging out at the beach. It played right into what I thought California life was all about. See, and the other thing that just stood out to me, it's like the Niners, them being seen as tough in any kind of way. It's like, I just don't believe that. (laughs) 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 Them rolling up in their rich cars and trying to be as tough as a motorcycle gang. Like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Never in my mind that I think that (laughs) was possible. How much of it is real in the show and how much of it is just teenage hubris. These rich kids pretending to be tough. There are a few moments where Logan has his rich kid crew and Weevil has the bikers. And Logan says, hey, you're not going to get the drop on me this time. It's a fair fight. We got equal numbers. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, no, I think the bikers would still kick your butt. Yeah. What criticisms might you levy at this show? I don't know if it would be fair criticisms. At the time when all of these shows were going around, I wouldn't have thought anything about Wallace or any other characters of color or the lack thereof, but I think that would be the only thing me now that I would levy against a show if they had chosen Wallace as a token black person or things of that nature. But besides that, I would say my biggest gripe is that new sheriff. I hate that new sheriff. He's so evil. He's evil. He is just disgusting. The fact that he got any kind of power, I just don't see it. If it had been an older man, honestly, acting like him, I would have seen it. But the fact that he's so young and he acts the way that he does on the show, I'm just surprised. Part of the thing that accelerated it might have been Lamb turning on his boss immediately, and maybe that helped him ascend to that status. I saw that both episodes that we watched are so chock full of plot. Every scene, you gotta pay attention, something's happening. I wish there were more character development scenes. Sure, Veronica, she likes photography and tech, But that all serves the overarching plot and explains why she's good at what she does. 
And I'd prefer to see a little bit more about her outside of being a sleuth. Like Wallace, he likes his radio-controlled planes. And I'm thinking, what hobbies does Veronica have as a teenager? Well, the TSC Ratings Board. For this one, for Veronica Mars, I'm going to give it P for plucky. <laughs> and it includes scenes of complex planning, ingenuity, and satisfying payoffs. <laughs> okay. I can see why you picked Plucky. I'm going to go for A for all right. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most all right thing about the show for you? I think the fact that it wasn't skanky. That a lot of shows that I've watched lately depicting high school experiences, everyone is too sexy. <laughs> everyone seems much older than what they are. But the fact that they really did, I think, try... Even if the characters look older than high school teens, I think that they didn't make them act too much older than what the show was trying to portray. And the fact that Veronica is a smart girl and very independent, I like that it was an alright show. <laughs> I'm trying to think of back then, I wasn't watching a ton of high school dramas. Did you watch The O.C.? Very briefly. Do you recall that being overly sexualized? Yeah, that one I think was overly sexualized. Teen dramas, I guess not so much, but like Gilmore Girls too. I've never been to private school, so I don't know if this is the way they portrayed that school to be so elite. Just seemed way off to me. So this one just seemed to be a lot more grounded than other shows that I've seen depicting high schoolers. Wish we get a team of researchers just to see if teens in media now, if it's gotten better or worse as far as being portrayed sexually. The scene that stood out to me in that sense was the car washing scene with Lily. They were not in bikini tops, they were just in regular shirts. And every other movie I've watched, like Bring It On or any high school fundraiser involving car washes, always has the cheerleaders in really skimpy outfits. Yeah, that's a good point. They did show some restraint there. <laughs> Dealing with sex, we have the beginning of the show where Veronica is watching the seedy hotel and taking pictures of people. And then we have that instance where she's at the party. Neither of those is particularly meant to make the audience feel hot. No. <laughs> They're both very gross portrayals of sex on screen. I can't imagine it was meant to be any moral of the story. Even the second episode, the affair between Weevil's cousin and one of the rich girls, mm -hmm. even that forwards the theme of sex entering into things, and it's not a very positive outcome for either of those characters. It's a show about abstinence. <laughs> Now, this segment, I call it RAT, Random Asinine Thoughts and Trivia. Laura, did anything random pop into your head while watching the show? It had to do more with Logan than anything. He, for me, besides the share of one of the most annoying characters in the first two episodes, I just kept wanting to punch him in the face. And I really was hoping that someone would punch him in the face repeatedly at some point. And he did get punched in the face. Yes, and I'm so glad. Like, what is it about him that just grates on you so hardcore? His pompous attitude towards her, like when she was just staring at the cool table. And he was there, and he kept making faces at her. And thinking about the fallout that they had because of Lily. I can understand him grieving and having some blame towards her. But to have your immediate personality go from being possibly annoyingly funny to just complete jerk, I just can't stand that. <laughs> and then the little spikes in his hair and the puka shells. <laughs> <laughs> Part of what makes Logan work in that environment and why he can be such a bastard, there's a lot of fakeness that I recall having happened in high school. 
And I think it helps breed that type of character. And then when you put the resources behind him and him living in the upper class, it just allows him to really be a jerk. You would hope once Logan is 10, 20 years older that maybe he will have grown out of it. Out of all the high schoolers portrayed in the show, which one does your heart just hope that later in life things turn up for them, that they turn things around? Because they're all kind of sad characters. They're all dealing with problems. They are, but I don't feel any sympathy towards the rich kids, and it's not just because they're rich. <laughs> it goes back to something you said earlier, where the show was moving from scene to scene a little too fast, where their characters weren't being developed as much. Like her ex-boyfriend, I didn't really understand why the mother, for example, thought that they were in love. Because he just didn't seem that interesting at all during these first two episodes. Logan, same thing. Like, I don't understand how he's going to grow from these first two episodes besides maybe being a little bit less of a jerk. So those characters weren't really developed for me. The only one I would say might be Wallace. I would like to ask you a series of questions in a segment that I call TLDL. Too long, didn't listen. Hopefully you can give me short, possibly one-word answers even. On a scale of 1 to 10, how likable is Veronica Mars? 9. What subplot did you find more interesting? Veronica's best friend's murder case, her mother's disappearance, or her issues with her former boyfriend, Duncan? Oh, the murder of her friend. I'm glad you answered that, because that is the overarching thing. <laughs> it does get resolved by the end of the season, so they don't forget about it. Who's your favorite villain? Logan, Weevil, or Sheriff Lamb? Weevil. Ooh, I'm curious about that. What metric were you using? Just who I didn't hate. Weevil's funny. I think I can relate to him growing up and his situation. Even though Weevil at the beginning was very, oh, I have a big dick, you want to see it? And there was that one. It just, he never seemed seriously offensive to me. It's just like vibrato. And I can laugh at that. Did you detect any undercurrent of maybe him having a romantic interest in Veronica and some of their scenes? Yes. I would expect Weevil to tell her, no way, I'm not going to do what you ask. But if you understand it with the notion that he is interested in her, then I buy it because, of course, he wants to make her happy. Is the series more teen drama or detective show? Detective show. Would you rather watch this on a date or with your teenage daughter? Teenage daughter. Do you think the show is a better commentary on socioeconomics, gender roles, or single-parent households? Gender roles. Are there any final words you'd like to leave us with why people should check this out if they haven't seen it? Nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> really? You could see yourself in the background just walking the hallways. Not even just walking the hallways, but just... Uh, there were so many teen movies coming out around this time that I would just laugh at them being so prominent in every single movie. But seeing them play out in Veronica Mars was much better. It didn't seem as ill-fitting. But if you weren't a Gen Y kid, if somebody's 15, 16-year-old now, how would you sell the show to them? Oh, that would be hard. <laughs> I think I could sell Gossip Girl. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know about Veronica Mars. Without using nostalgia as a bait, I don't know how I would sell it because I think you mentioned before, one of the things that was very interesting about her is how resourceful she is and how she was able to utilize her resources and the skills of her friends in order to investigate these things. But I think kids nowadays, most of them know how to do stuff like this. And a lot of them are really great with technology. So I don't know if they would see her as being 
as skilled as she is, or just criticizing the show. What would you say about the aspect of her being a bit of a rebel, nonconformist? Do you think kids today would find that very interesting? I think all kids now are like that, right? Yeah. 